You keep running from me. We had a contract signed and you backed out. That's pussy shit, my guy. Maybe we do an MMA fight, right? Maybe we hop in the cage and I'll introduce you to my right and my left. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to B Team Jiu Jitsu. And uh, it's a couple days after a competition. We're settled back in here in Austin, Texas, in B Team headquarters. And uh, it's time to chat about the previous comp. Let's see. I guess I'll start with uh, Nikki Ryan. Nikki Ryan against a very formidable opponent, one of the Gracies. Not of the great Gracie lineage, but of a different Gracie lineage. Uh, um, let's see, he had a pretty tough match. Um, I feel as if Nikki Ryan has like a mental, has a mental block sometimes when it comes to competing. I'm gonna go out of my way nowadays to try to build his mental side of, of, uh, of jiu-jitsu, his mental side of competing. Just so, just cause I believe that if he changes uh, how he thinks, how he approaches competition, we can, we can see a different, a different animal, a different beast when it comes to the competition time. Um, maybe even something like a sports psychologist could help Nicky Ryan perform at his best. And I say this just because I truly believe that Nikki Ryan is one of the best grapplers um, in the world, let alone his weight class. From the technicality to to the ability to teach and and to even like performing inside the gym. If you if you see the way Nikki performs every day inside practice, you would be like, this guy's going to win ADCC. There's no doubt in your mind. And um, if that same guy that is in training shows up to competition, he will be undeniably the best grappler in his weight class. Now. There is there is like some some things that I do personally that help me get the most out of my competition that I believe you know Nikki Ryan could do. I did I did see him get a good warm up in this previous match, which was um, which was different than some of his other matches. Um, I gave him like a a warm up routine and I saw him like you know kind of do a, a version of that, which made me proud. And I felt like he he went out there with a good warm up, which is which is super necessary to go out there hot, you know, almost almost sweating uh, prior to stepping on the competition mats. One, it, pre it prevents injury, and two, you never wanna go out there cold um, to do battle, gotta be warm. In addition, I like to, um, I like to tell myself a couple of different things like, I bring, I mean, shameless, shameless plug, but I have a, I have an instructional called um, pre-match ritual that I break down my pre-match routine and some I've been doing for years, but um, but personally, like I'll just show appreciation towards even having the the opportunity, the ability to compete because not everybody does. Um, besides that, I do a few a few different things, but um, if we can, if I can get like a, uh, if I can find a way for Nikki Ryan to compete. I don't want to say fearlessly, but maybe compete carelessly, then I feel as if we will see the best version of himself. Like, there's a lot of pressure on Nicky Ryan because he has his brother, you know, the, considered, uh, you know, one of the greatest grapplers of all time. And, you know, people look at him like, like he should be that, but he's a different, he's a different beast, completely different, different physique, different, different style of, of grappling. Um, and he will find his own success very soon. So I'm gonna go out of my way and I'm gonna go out of my way to try to help Nicky Ryan. It's intimidating for me to try to give him advice sometimes because he's so knowledgeable, but I'm not talking about knowledge advice. I'm talking about like mental, mental advice or like how he should approach a match advice. So just a different, a different aspect. Like, you know, you hear Conor McGregor talking about fighting and whatnot, how it's like 80 or 100% mental and it's completely true cool if you can do stuff in the gym that's great but the mental side is competing right super super intense mentally um so with that said nikki ryan um um didn't show his best version he also got injured in the match which i hate to see the guy get banged up man he's like one of my good friends and to see him you know after the match limping around his legs all swollen he had like a weird position that he landed in He's just not the, not the luckiest guy. Like he gets banged up here and there, and if, it hurts my heart to see him uh, injured, man. I hate it. All right, so 
let's talk about Heisem. Heisem Rita uh, going against a very tough grappler, right? Right, Mason Fowler. Uh, he won. A, he, he won a few tournaments. Won ADCC um, invitation or uh, sorry, won, he won uh, UFC Fight Pass Invitational a few tournaments ago. Um, he submitted his way th through that tournament, I believe, and then he even beat. Uh, did Mason beat Craig one time? In yes. Twice in, in submission, in submission, underground, underground. So you know, Craig Jones is you know one of the greatest grapplers of, of all time. So Mason, you know, um, had a tightly contested match against against Craig, and he ended up winning a few a few years back. So Mason Fowler is a phenomenal grappler, right? Very well-rounded guy, good wrestling, um, good ability to create scrambles, and you know he's he's in shape. He doesn't really get tired. Um, so Heisen went went out there uh, and and competed. You know. Um, it was my it was my inclination that previous prior to the match I was telling Heist, I was like, I was like, listen bro, your best opportunity is to to stay on top of this guy, right? Don't pull guard and uh wrestle with him and, and um you know try try to beat him from top position. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, Heisem uh, made a couple a, a couple errors in his game, and uh, he ended up losing the match. Um, but you know, he he's got a, a ways to improve, and um, Heisem has all the athletic ability, um, all the athletic ability in the world. He's got the physique, the speed, the strength, um, but he lacks some technique here and there, and. You know, he definitely, in, in the future of his competition career, especially at B Team, we're going to do a good job of sharpening up his technique, add, adding different tools to um, a previously one-sided grappler, essentially. You know, he has great judo, um, pretty good, uh, pretty decent guard and whatnot. But um, if we can, I believe that we can make Heisem a bit more dynamic and it'll make the opponent have a harder time uh, expecting what's going to come next. So, like, you know, when you're competing, they, they say they say war is all about deception, right? If your opponent knows what's what's coming, then it's going to be easy for them to prepare. So, if they can think they know what's coming, and then you hit them with a uh, a different series or a different sequence that they're not um, they're not expecting, that's like that's extremely beneficial when it comes to your, your match. So, you know, in the future, I'd really like to help Heisem add different tools to his game uh, because he's got the athleticism, he's got the want to, to be really good, to be great. Um, so we're gonna make sure we get him there. And then as for my, as for my match, um, I won in a very dominant fashion, Nicky Rod versus Nicky Rod, the black belt slayer, even though I'm a, brown, I'm a brown belt, you know what I mean? But I'm the black belt slayer. I slay, I slay the belts, you feel me? Um, Nicky Rod versus Yuri Samoas. Yuri Samoas, multiple time ADCC champion and the current reigning absolute ADCC champion. So a very tough opponent, right? Guy's been in the game. He's been doing jujitsu for probably as long as I've been alive. Um, so you're talking 20 plus years of training jiu-jitsu, 10 plus years at the, at the high, of competing at the highest level of jiu-jitsu. And, um, and you know, I went out there and I, I won, as I said I would, in a very dominant fashion. I go out there, I show different, different aspects of my game. I was able to pull guard, sweep them, uh, you know, wrestle up, get on top of them pass guard multiple times, pass them out to position, control the match. Um, but I didn't, I didn't get the submission, even though I had some opportunity to. And that was due to me playing too conservative. It was a newer rule set. So I was a bit concerned if I went for, like I had a, situ I had a couple situations where I had access to the back. And, and in my mind, I was, I, I should have asked the question uh, uh, about back attacks. Like, I should have asked the question prior to the match of if I am on top, say I pass guard, I'm, I'm on top of the guy in like, you know, three quarter guard. Uh, if I start attacking the, the back, which is not technically a submission, but a control position. If I start attacking the back and the guy ends up on top, hypothetically, would that be a sweep for the bottom guy? So it was my fault that I didn't ask that question. So I was unsure. Um, which which prevented me from taking the risk of going for the back, or, or um, which ultimately pre prevented me from getting some submission early on. So if I could go back, if I could go back in time, I would have asked that question, and that would have gave me more confidence in, in attacking the back, and not worried about um, not worried about the sweep point. You know what I mean? 
So in our match, yeah, I was able to uh, pull guard, wrestle up, uh, get on top of my opponent, pass him. And I didn't, I, although I did body lock pass him early on, I also showed some loose passing, right? I passed like, uh, I used a little bit of high stepping to get to north-south position and I was able to pass guard that way. So we're starting to see different, a different dynamic towards uh, Nicky Rod's game, right? Or just, just like I said earlier, you know, hitting, hitting, hitting them where they least expected, uh, where they least expect it. So deceiving your opponent, you know what I mean? If they know what to expect, it's easy. If they're, you hit them with something that they're not used to, they're unexpected. It's pretty good. Yuri said before his match that if he got on top of me, that he would uh, dominate the match, that he would win, and uh, that's not the case. You know, I was able to pull guard, and um, he wasn't able to pass or uh, control me in any way. So I'm very proud of my ability to to pull guard against against an, a multiple-time ADCC champion. Right, guy won three gold medals in the Olympics of Jiu-Jitsu. So truly impressive career, and then even more impressive that a five-year brown belt is able to um, go out there and win in a dominant fashion. After after the match. Right, I get to the hotel and I'm like, I'm in the, I'm in the, I'm in the elevator with Marigali, and I'm just like looking at him, not saying anything, just looking at him. He's looking, he's looking down because, you know, I'm the alpha and he can, he can smell that. So it's a bit, um, it's a bit intimidating for you know a guy like that to be around me. So. So we just walk our go our separate ways, go to the rooms or whatever. And then once I get to my room, I see an interview with Marigali and he called me a donkey. <laughs> right? They were like because you know Marigali submitted Penna or Penna just gave up really. Um and then in an interview they were like, Oh, who's your next match? He was like, I, I don't know, I got I'll pick whoever I want. And they were like, Well, wh why don't you go against the Girod? And he like super he just deflects it right away. He's like, Oh, but what does he want? What does he want? Bro. What have you won in the world of Nogi? You've actually never won any tournaments in the world of Nogi. You're doing Gi stuff, right? You've won worlds or whatever in the Gi, IBJJF worlds and shit. Cool, different fucking sport, my guy. So he's over here trying to criticize me as if I have no success in the world of Nogi, but ADCC, um, North American Trials champion, which Marigali never won and could never win ADCC American Trials. I've also uh, two silver medals, which is fucking, that sucks, right? Didn't win in the finals, but made it to the finals of ADCC twice with minimal experience, with a year and a half experience, and then with uh, about three years of experience of jujitsu, um, two silver medals. But besides that, uh, UFC Invitational Champion um, against multiple ADCC uh, competitors, uh, EBI absolute world champion, fucking dominant fashion, dominant uh, display of jiu-jitsu, submitted my way through that tournament, subbed everybody. Um, and uh, you know, a few other minor minor events. I've also beat many more ADCC champions than Marigali has. So like, I don't know where he's getting these statistics of me never winning anything. Um, it's pretty, it's kind of cringe to watch him do interviews because he, he is trying his hardest to act like Gordon, but he's not, he is not Gordon, right? He, he said, tries to the, preach like the authenticity is, uh, is everything. He, he's, I guess he's kind of authentic in the sense that he's a douchebag. I'm, I'm sure you guys seen the, saw the video of him cursing out one of UFC's um, workers, uh, a lady that's super nice, she's just doing her job, he, and he's trying to like get out onto the stage to watch his uh, teammate compete, and she's like, she's asking him like, hey, like, uh, are you supposed to be here? And he's, he's like, uh, he's like, he, I don't know exactly what he said, but something like, uh, fuck you, leave me alone, or like, uh, you know, so, something, something just kind of grimy and kind of rude, really rude to, to a lady that's just doing her job. So that was extremely disrespectful. Um, to just a, a, a nice lady that's just working for the UFC. Um, and I'm happy we got that on film to show his true colors. That, that's like, dude, how can you have no respect for, for your elders, you know what I mean? Or just for people in general. Like, you don't go out, go around. Like, even if you think you're hot shit, don't disrespect people. Like, I, I know I'm great. I know I'm better than everybody, but I'm not... I'm not out here like disrespecting humans, you know what I mean? It's, it's, life is tough enough. Let's fucking be nice to each other. So, so yeah, if I had any feelings, like if I was an emotional person at all, I'd say he hurt my feelings, but I, I just don't care what people say, you know? He called me a donkey. 
donkeys are cool. I don't know what to say. Like they're hardworking do <laughs> donkey. Donkeys can pull some weight. You know what I mean? So, um, with that said, Marigali, let's have a match. You keep running from me. We had a contract signed with uh, Flow Grappling, who's number one, and you backed out. You signed the contract, and then two days later, you're like, wow, you're not gonna win this match. You realize that. You probably talk to your team. Coach is probably like, hey, this, this ain't a good, this ain't gonna go well for you. And then you backed out of our contract. That's pussy shit, my guy. So, let's do this, Marigali. Let's have a match. Whatever rule set, Whatever uh, promotion, UFC fight pass, full grappling, let's get down and dirty. And if that's not good, or good enough for you, maybe we do an MMA fight, right? Maybe we hop in the cage and I'll introduce you to my right and my left, right? I mean, that sounds, that sounds pretty cool. You're a confident guy, Mr. Marigali. So let's confidently do battle. I would love, I would love nothing more than to make you bleed. That sounds like a good time. And if that's not good enough, you know, we, in the great state of Texas, we have this amazing like Americanized law called mutual combat. So if you really don't like me, maybe we could just set up a time and place and we do the battle, right? Whatever you want, whether it's jujitsu, whether it's an actual fight, I would love, I would love to hop on that pony and ride you all the way home, baby. Let's get her done. Listen, I hope you guys enjoyed this little, this little interview, right? I won in the, in the dominant fashion. Uh, I'm going to make sure I do my best to help my teammates get the most out of their jiu-jitsu career. Gordon, you saw my call out, $50,000 on the line. You denied it. We know why you denied it, because I'm, I'm the best grappler in the world, right? Number one right here. You don't want that smoke, boy. So Gordon denied my 50K bet, 100K on the line, bet match. He don't want it. Marigali, you're scared of me. We know this. I got the physique. I'm more handsome than you. You, like, look, you look like a worm on steroids. It's kind of embarrassing. You're doing gear, but you still have the physique of when I was in, four, in fourth grade, right? You have limited muscle definition. You can deadlift all you want. You can do all the fucking weightlifting. You will never look as good as Nicky Rod. I'm the most handsome guy in the sport. It just so happens I'm also the best grappler in the sport. So keep doing your steroids, Mar Marigali. Um, I'll see you soon, buddy. I'll see you soon. Guys, like and subscribe, B-Team Jiu-Jitsu. Buy the merch. I don't, I, don't, I don't wear shirts too often, but when I do, it's always B-Team stuff. Buy the merch. Check out B-Team Submeta. Enjoy the breakdowns, right? We do vo voiceovers. We film complete 10-minute rolls. And then we voice it over. We break down the techniques, help you guys get better. And um, that's it, bro. I want a match. I want to compete against the best guys in the world. Gordon want a match. Marigali, I'll take you in a fight or in jiu-jitsu. Doesn't matter, buddy. Answer the challenge. Let's get her done.